We've covered a load of four at the back tactics, 4-3-3, four, 4-3-2-1, three, three, four, three, even the good old 4-4-2. Four, four, Today we're going to have a go at creating three at the back tactics, 3-5-2 three, and 3-4-3. Three, three. Hope you're well folks, as it stands we're about two or three days from full game release of Football Manager so it's the ideal time to start thinking about what tactics you're going to use. We've had the 4-3-3, the 4-2-3-1, the 4-4-2 and a lot of requests for three at the back tactics using wing backs and we're going to do that today. It's mostly going to be about that back area, your centre backs and the wing backs. Now with every formation you do have preset options depending on the style of play you want to play. Now if we look down the side there you can see all the tactical styles. Now, controlled possession is a popular one for your free at the back because you're going to be looking to keep the ball quite a lot. We'll have a look at this one. So there's the tactical style of controlled possession. If we go down to choose formation, then you'll see 4-2-3-1, 4-4-3, and another option is 5-2-3 wide. You don't have to use that. You can clip it to other formations, go down to five defender formations, and they're all going to be there, and the game's going to throw you some recommended roles and positions. So just like that, we pressed in. It's gave us a 3-5-2 formation, 3 Center backs, two wing backs, three midfield, two up front, and a raft of team instructions for control possession. But I think if we create one from scratch, we can do a lot better than that. We go to create new tactic right at the bottom of your tactical style screen. Clip that, up it comes with all the different various formations. We'll go down to five defender formations, and we're going to pick one. It's just going to be our template to work off our blank slate. Doesn't matter which one we choose. And there we have it, there's our blank canvas that we've got to work off. The positions and the roles, they're all going to move around. This guy might end up being in there as we get moving. If you look down the side there, the team instructions are all blank. It really is a blank canvas. A whole new whiteboard for us to make this tactic from. It's at this point we need to decide what we want our team to do. Are we going to be a defensive counter-attacking team? Are we going to look to dominate games and hold possession? Because that's all going to be a factor in the way you build your team. Now for the sake of this video and the fact that we have that new sexy wide centre back role we're going to look to make an attacking tactic with this formation. Once you've analysed your squad and decided what you want to do you'll know whether or not you have the players capable of playing a wide centre back role. As a snapshot we're using Chelsea today and someone like Malang Sa is a perfect wide centre back. You can see there he's a natural centre back also play wing back. His attributes show that he can do that role as well. If you want him to be a wide centre back for example there's the attributes that come into play. I do know your roles video all about the wide centre back soon. For the purpose of the video, I'm going to assume that you've got at least one player capable of playing wide centre back. Now, because we're going to be quite attacking, I'm going to have him in support with the option of changing him to attack if we need to. Now, with your wide centre back on support, that changes the role of your wing back. If you were wanting your wing back to be defensive, your wide centre back on support will overlap him. If your wing back's on support, he's going to back him up more steady. Now, if your wing back is on attack, meaning he's going to try and get to the byline. When he's in that position there, your wide centre-back will provide support in these areas for him to pull it back to or diving in. So for today, we're going to go with a wide wing-back on attack with the wide centre-back, all these wides, on support. So them two are going to combine. So on the left-hand side of the pitch, we're sorted. We're going for a wide centre-back supporting the attacking wing-back. On the other side, we're going to have a completely different role. Those of you who have played a bit of beta FM22 will know the ball-playing defender is a massive role so far. What we're seeing from the ball-playing defender, as we click onto him there, is when he gets the ball, not only is he pinging balls left and right, but he's carrying the ball forward as well. So us being a positive attacking team, we're going to use the ball-playing defender on the right-hand side, which means our wing-back on the other side, we're not going to have him on attack, because if we do, and he's all the way up here all the time, and our ball-playing defender starts marching up there as well, we might be a bit exposed down that side. So we'll keep our ball-playing defender on the other side. Next to him, the wing-back will have as a support, so he'll be more defensive than the other side, but he'll still get up when needed. Now there's possible exceptions to the rule. We could have that wing back on attack as well. So we've got both wing backs bombing up and down. If we decided to choose one of these three to be more defensive and pop into the CMD role. Away from home that might be an option where he can sit in there and cover across. For today we're going a bit more aggressive. So we're not going to have him there. For that reason we're going to drop our wing back to just a support. So our final position in our back five, back three, back five, whichever way you look at it, is obviously the boy in the middle. What is he going to do? Now he's got this wide centre back spending a lot of time there. And he's got the centre back to his right hand side spending a lot of time going forward and pinging balls. Add to that, you've got two aggressive wing backs. This boy becomes very important indeed. And you'll see I've got him on cover. And the reason for that is he's going to sweep up the balls in behind these two centre backs. In some cases, you might even have to get right across and cover the wing backs. So being an aggressive team, we've got to have a high line anyway. We'll have our centre back on cover just to provide a little bit more stability. 
In behind him, I've got my sweeper keeper on support. Because we've got a high line, and most of the time this guy's going to be in charge of it. If he misses the cover, we're going to have our sweeper keeper to do the covering up. We have our back three stroke five done now. We've got good balance. We've got left hand side attack, right hand side attack, and we've got a nice stability in the middle. And that's what we're looking for from any system is balance and it to make sense. If we were going a bit more defensive, there's nothing stopping us getting our wide centre back onto defence. So he holds his position in there more. Or ball playing defender, just converting him back to a normal central defender and dropping these wing backs back a bit. But for today, we are positive. That's our back five. Now you need to decide what you're going to do with the more advanced position. So you've got three midfielders left, you've got two strikers. Or do you want two midfielders, three strikers? Which way are you going to go? I'll show you how you can do both. So you can build one tactic attacking maybe at home and you can build a very similar version for your away game so the at home first we've got our three central midfielders there sorry one of them we're going to push forward into the attacking range in there now because he's attacking we'll forget about him for now but we'll just remember that he is attacking so one of these players is going to be super important because he's going to have to hold that position again this links into all the other positions on the pitch so if you look on the left hand side central midfielder there on his side he's going to have Chilwell bombing down that side supported by Sa. So quite a lot of the time in possession, Chiwell's going to find himself there. Saar's going to find himself there. You can see then the problem we have. We've got Christensen, who's got all this area to cover here. So for me, this fella then becomes really important as your defensive midfielder. I'm going to want him to hold his position. I don't want him going too far. I need him to watch that side while also having an eye on the attack as well. So our options for this, like we said in the prior videos, we want a player who's going to hold his position. I'm going to think central midfielder on defense so you can see he's hard coded into hold or if you want him to be a bit more flamboyant than that you can obviously and you've got the player for it deep line playmaker on defend in that zone there which is what we're going to use today so he's going to hold his position there so he's going to keep an eye on this area for us now i always like to show you different options because there is by no means one way to do this so if i didn't have that attacking midfielder in there and he was back in here more coverage and these guys on the left, I can get even more overload down that side by flipping this guy to a Mazala. That will mean he will come into these areas as well. And then when the left-hand side consists of your Mazala popping into there, your wing-back diving down there, and your wide centre-back on support backing it up, you can see the overloads you can have in that area there. So that's another great option for you. So what about your right-sided central midfielder? So on his side, he's got a wing-back on support who's still going to be really aggressive and get up there. And you've got a ball-playing defender who's occasionally going to march up there into these areas as well it kind of unleashes this guy a bit more than the other side but he's still got an attacking midfielder in front of him and he's still got two strikers so the best part of three players and if you count the wing backs four and five five more advanced players he needs to be a bit more watchful than an attacking midfielder and for me that oozes box to box in a box to box he's going to be up and down the pitch doing exactly what a box to box midfielder says on the tin so on that side of the pitch it's pretty ideal because he knows he's going to have the ball playing defender there and he's got his wing back on support so he can back them up both sides this is where you can add some pis into there so if you want your box to box midfielder to help out your wing back occasionally as well so he's got a bit of support there's nothing wrong with going onto his pis and popping in moving to channels which means he will drive into these areas as well where your wing back is so they can combine Another option you can use, because you've got so many attacking players, box to box, very similar role, ball in midfielder, he's going to be able to move into channels as well. He'll try and win the ball back a little bit higher up the park. So if you feel like you're struggling to get the ball, you could flip him to a ball in midfielder. For today, we're going to stick with the box to box midfielder and we're going to include a few PIs in there as well. And there they are, basic ones. I want him to cross more often because combining with moving into channels, he'll find himself in these areas quite a lot. So if the wing back on support isn't quite up to space, like the wing back on attack will be, the box box midfielder can provide a cross in as well. What we have now is our back three stroke five done and our two central midfielders, one helping out while creating and the other one getting up and down being dynamic. Now it's a glory positions. We've got our front three, if you like, attacking midfield and two strikers. That's the way we're going to set up. So attacking midfield first in here so we've got a deep line playmaker if i didn't have a deep line playmaker and i needed a bit more creativity i may switch this to an advanced playmaker or if we're dominating a team and we're not breaking them down adding another playmaker in higher up the pitch might do the business for the formation we're building though i'm presuming we're going to be dominating the ball high up the park so i'm going to have him as an attacking midfielder there on attack so he's going to be able to get into the box and affect things basically like a third striker that's what i'm looking at 
if I feel like he's not getting high up enough, I've got absolutely no issue with dropping him into a shadow striker as well. Even high up the pitch. Shadow strikers do drop back, go for the ball, especially if they've got the trait, comes deep to get the ball. So he's not going to be permanently up there, so he's not going to be overly exposed. So I'm going to go for one of those two options. We'll start with attacking midfielder on attack. And if we want him higher up, he switches to a shadow striker. If I needed a little bit more creativity, we'll switch him to an advanced playmaker. If you've got a messy type, my God, bang him in as a Trequatista. At the start of the video, I said that it's going to be a 3-5-2 or a 3-4-3. And that attacking midfield role, stroke shadow striker, helps you get into like a free striker setup. What if we wanted a more traditional free central midfield approach? You want the attacking threat that this guy provides, but from a deep position. Two options there. For me, it'll be a central midfield on attack. A lot of similarities between that and the attacking midfielder. Differences are, of course, he starts from a deeper position, meaning he'll be in the box less, but he will arrive later. So if you're trying to break a team down, it's a different option to do, or it's a good option for an away match. Another option, like we said earlier, is to use him as a Mazala, linking up with your wing backs and potentially a wide centre backs to cause a mass overload on one side if your opponents are weak down one side, maybe. On to the strikers, and when you're using two strikers, it depends what works well together. Now, in the round, it, we've got an attacking midfielder on attack, so he's going to be bursting into the box quite often so we need a bit of space and movement in front of him for this reason one of the strikers is going to be an advanced forward movement all over the place pressing the opposition defenders not giving them a moment's peace when he breaks out wide it opens up a space for the attacking midfielder to burst into now alongside him we could do with some sort of a creative force as well a little clever player this year more than ever you have a few options you've got a deep line forward who when we click on him you can see it's going to be all about flair finishing things like that or, and I'm really enjoying using this at the minute, you've got your target forward. Now on support or on attack, it depends what sort of player you've got. If you've got a better player on the ball, I would use the target forward as an attack. Especially if you've got a player in here. If you don't have a player in here and you need him to drop back a bit, the support forward as a target forward will drop back. On attack, he'll stay a little bit higher up, but he'll do a bit more as well. Expect flick-ons, of course, and little flicks to your teammates, but he'll do a little bit more being a target forward. And obviously, if you've got wing backs who are willing to cross and your box-to-box -box midfielder we cross more often, having a target forward to aim at is a great, great option. In my opinion, though, the front two is the least important role to set up in a wing back system. You can use prior experience of what you've used well, what roles you enjoy to use up front and should work well. As always, we finish the Builder Tactic videos with the team instructions. Now I'm going for an attacking lineup, so attacking team instructions are what we're going to use. In we go, and you'll notice my mentality straight off the bat is attacking. If I'm playing a free at the back system, I still want us to be dominant and get up that pitch. So I'm asking for an attacking mentality. Into the instructions, I've got slightly short passing so we can move it around, keep the ball, because we don't want to be losing the ball in the free in the back system because we can find ourselves exposed in a few areas. Tempo is set to slightly higher and attacking width is wide. We can change this as and when we need. If we're getting a bit of joy down one side, perhaps through the wing back, wide centre back combo, we can bring it out wide. Now this goes for the approach play as well. We've got play out defence because we're going to have ball players. At the minute, we don't focus down either side, but if things are working well down one side of the pitch perhaps, most noticeably that left-hand side, we may well focus down that left-hand side, but we leave it blank at the minute. Same goes for passing the space. We'll only use that if the opposition are prone to through balls. That's a good little tip for you. Crossing, we keep it a mixed. Normally, I love the low crossing option, but we've got Lukaku. You've got to think about that if you're using the target man. Plus, the odd floaty cross here and there in FM22 is proven pretty luxurious. I've got to be more expressive because I want a few players, such as my wide centre-backs, my ball-playing defenders, my playmakers, just to have a bit more licence. We are aggressive, so we are going to both counter-press and counter. Now, the reason I like to counter-press with a free at the back system is because the free back there maintain their shape while the others go for it. So I think it's less risky than a fought the backer. Out of possession, we'll start with a much more often trigger press, but if you've seen one of my videos about pressing, we do tend to drop it at various aspects of the game before repeating back to them much more often. More aggressive defensive tactics, such as get it stuck in, use a tighter marking, and this was an interesting one. I'm gonna use the offside trap because we're gonna have the free at the back. And quite often, the man in the centre is going to be left there by himself when these boys have been a little bit more adventurous. So if he can catch them on the offside trap, rather than getting outnumbered, it's not a bad option. It's risky, we may take that off, but for now I'm going to go with it when I use free at the back systems. Defensive width, I'll keep it at standard. Quite often though, I will draw it in like that to bring them into the middle because at the end of the day, we've got more players in the central areas of the pitch. So that's a free at the back system. Loads of ways to do it. Trust me, loads of ways. But you can use this as a template and tweak it as you see. I've played a couple of games. Let's see how it's been working in match. 
First goal here against Watford. Thiago Silva, the ball playing defender to Saul, who was playing as the deep line playmaker. Now, remember what I said about the breaking attacking midfielder. There he is, Kai Havertz, round the back, slots it home for 1 0. Second goal, there is the overload on the left hand side. You can see Alonso playing as the left wing back. He's getting backed up by Christiansen, who played as the wide centre back on that side. As we play on, Alonso crosses in. All the way over to the other side, so that's your other wing back getting nice and high up the pitch. He crosses over for Timo Werner. Timo Werner to score a header. Through the centre of the park, Conte. There's Lukaku and Lukaku as a target forward. Remember, he will drop off. And remember what I said about him being attacking, being better on the ball. Look at this little ping through from Lukaku as the creative force. Lovely ball through to Timo Werner. Advance forward, going out wide, lays it back across. There's Ziyech off the bench in the attacking midfield role. In he goes. That's working perfectly at the minute. It carried on in the game against Brentford. You can see there Lukaku picks it up nice and deep, being the target forward. He lays it to Pulisic, playing as the right wing back, believe it or not, back to Lukaku into those wide areas. We said we wanted movement to bring space for the onrushing midfielders. Here's Mason Mount from box to box midfield, who pings in the number one. Another nice goal coming up. That's wide centre back Saar, infield to box to box midfield and Mount. Out wide, we've got Chilwell, wing back. Look how high up he is on the other side. Pulisic, the other wing back, really high up. Mount finds Kai Havertz, who finds Sol. There's Chilwell, whips it in. Who's coming in? Attacking midfielder Kai Havertz, pings it in. So cool. I hope you enjoyed that build a tactic video. Three at the back, five at the back is probably the hardest one to explain how to build. So you've just a lot of trial and error involved in that. That one's a nice solid one to start off with. Use the template and start adapting yours. Nice, icy lemonade with the